Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it's time for another daily dose of dismal Disney. We've got some Disney infighting here. We've got Abigail Disney backing Bob Iger and the current board, which is pretty interesting considering she's slammed Bob Iger in the past. Right. So now Disney, when they're trying to, you know, get anything they can get to to win shareholders to vote for them. Yeah. And they did the stupid Ludwig von Drake video and they keep bringing out the, you know, the nostalgia. Now they got Disney, Walt Disney and Roy Disney's grandkids to write letters about how the company and how it was magic when they were kids and how it's going to lose its magic if you vote for Pelts. I shit you not. That is their latest <laughs> move. They're literally, they don't have, you know, Walt and Roy, so they're, dra they're dragging out the grandkids. Well, we're going to talk about this because speaking of dragging, Abigail Disney has dragged her. Her legacy has been dragging Iger and Walt Disney Company. Well, she was dragging uh, Walt himself. She called oh, yes. him pra practically a, a fascist. Yes. Yes. So I'm like, for her to talk, like I had, I had more respect for Abigail Disney a couple of years ago when she went to bat for cast members and stuff like that. But then she shot her mouth off about uh, dear old uh, great uncle Walt and, and what a fascist he was. And I'm like, oh my God, you did not. Like you've she only did. got your money because of him. Well, Bob Iger, you know, Bob Iger, who's just been buying up everything. And then they talked about, you know, lately at Disney, there's been people worried they're going to take Walt Disney out of the Disney company. They're going to change the name and stuff. Now, that was this rumor. But there's been a lot of behavior as of late. They keep walking back Walt's stuff, you know, things that he worked on. They don't, they want to remove. And they keep doing this. But, you know, guys, my Uncle Walt and my dad, Roy, they would not agree to this. Yeah, yeah, we'll 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 talk about this, and it's so weird because uh, Roy was I I thought Roy was the one who didn't want uh, Bob Iger to to come in. Oh wait, no, 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 never mind. Strike that, reverse it. No, he was the one who pushed out Eisner, and then right. they brought Iger in. So, and then that was kind of the beginning of the end of Disney as. Yeah, Disney. because, you know, Disney who like to invent and, and make new things. And now we just got the Disney company who just makes live action remakes of all their animated films or like five or six, you know, it's Toy Story 5, Frozen 3, because they don't want to make new stuff. That company. Yeah, it's Disco. It's Disco. Yeah. It's not the Walt Disney Company anymore. Let's talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views and rants. Guys, you get a woohoo if you do. Woohoo. So Geeky is going to lead this one. She's been going down the uh, the rabbit hole. I just went just a little bit. I could have gone a lot further. I just didn't give enough shit about uh, Dis no, Abigail Disney to do much more. But she's been constantly complaining about Iger and company. Oh, yeah, yeah. For well, years. Remember her movie she just did? She made that movie, uh, The American Dream and Other Fairy Tales, where she was she was tearing apart the Walt Disney Company. Yes. And like Bob Iger and everything else on the board. Yeah, she just did made a movie about it like a couple years ago. I, right? Well, okay, so here's the thing. She is she is an activist first and foremost, mm -hmm. and she has the luxury of being an activist because she has all of her family money. Yeah, I don't see her selling off all her shares and just giving no, it all away. No, no. Uh, no, that's, yeah, exactly. Uh, champagne socialist, I guess they call them. But but beyond that, um, I think this is political. I think that she's basically like Bob Iger since he's on, I mean, it's my personal opinion, but I think since he's on the left and Peltz is on the right, that that's what the deal is. I think that she actually doesn't want Peltz to come in because in her mind, Peltz is going to come in and he's going to expect Disney to act like an actual company like her great uncle Walt did. Well, no, to be fair <laughs> though, a lot of her comments she does make, she basically is like, you know, oh, the corporations need to stop being corporations and be, and be better, but they're not going to make money if they're not corporations. And she, she keeps saying stuff like that, but, but make no mistake, Bob Iger and company are a corporation. Oh, yeah. They all are. So you just think she's worried about that Pelts is going to be more of a corporation. Yes. They'll never mention the Blackwells at all. They might as well not be there. Well, they're they're laughable. I, I Some people think that the Blackwells are just like a psyop. They're like, did, did Bob Iger let them come in just because their their ideas are so ridiculous that nobody's going to take them seriously and it's going to split the vote or what? Uh, maybe. Well, here's, I guess what they did was they got the grandkids. So Disney's so desperate to make sure. Now, keep in mind, if Disney was so sure they had all the votes they needed and they mm. were going to stay secure in their, their seats and Iger and co were totally safe. They would not be going to the extremes. The laughable extremes are going to. So now they went and got the grandkids 
to make a letter to send the shareholders to vote for Bob and Co. Because that's what their dad would have done, except for that they've done everything they could to pretend that he doesn't exist. Yeah. So they said that he, they, that um, Pelsa's group was wolves in sheep's clothing and they were villains in a Disney story. Bob Iger, his management team, and the board of directors are faithful to this magic. They understand the longevity of the Walt Disney Company, except they're destroying it after 100 years isn't only the result of smart business decisions. It is rooted in a strong emotional connection Disney continues to forge with generations of people around the globe. Remember, nostalgia, guys. Nostalgia. When you wish upon a star, vote what way we want. We may not agree about everything, but we know that our grandfather would be especially proud of what, what Disney means to the world today. What does Disney mean to the world today? Because you guys, can, one hand, you, you, you shit on him constantly. And the yes. other hand, you keep using him, parading him around to get your way. We also know that, like us, he would be very concerned by the threat posed by self-anointed activist investors. He be there have been a lot of things he'd been opposed to before this. Oh um, parental rights and education and all that stuff in Florida, he wouldn't have probably went, got involved in a lot of that shit either. But here we are. I love how you're picking and choosing, okay? Walt hated commies. And he would I just not, remember that. Right, I know. And he would not, and he was wanting to do these parks to make it affordable for families. Yes. The way you guys have just treated people is your pay pay. Alcohol free. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Alcohol free. And basically the company treats them and you guys benefit from every, all the money being, you know, made by treating people like pay pigs. Yeah. But you know, do go on. Um who are really wolves in sheep's clothing just waiting to tear Disney apart is if they can trick shareholders into opening the door for them. No, shareholders are tired because the company has been in decline. Magic. Disney has been completely fucked up sucking the last year. Let's be honest here. I know. you know, I, Commas are there, okay? <laughs> commas. Mickey's been taking dicky. All their films did shit. Yeah. Except for like one. And they, they broke even or made money. It was so little, it was ridiculous. They keep chasing audiences and agendas, and that's not working. No. They were too like everybody else. And she did mention another article before about how everybody was jumping on the streaming services because of the pandemic, and they all just thought the money was never going to end, and that's what Disney did. Bob Iger you know, keeps making these decisions that are not good. He keeps just um, overspending money with the Fox acquisition. He keeps buying shit he doesn't know how to manage. Now we got Star Wars in the gutter, Marvel's in the gutter, Pixar's in the gutter, and all this other crap. But it's just, they're wolves in sheep's clothing, guys. Now look, I'm not, I get what they're trying to say. Do I, I think Peltz is more about business than he is about the magic. That's true. I would say that's true. But yeah. I don't think Iger's about the magic either. I think Iger's really good at bullshitting people. Yeah. Iger's a con man. I mean, he really is. He basically, he just bought a whole bunch of stuff, uh, managed it badly, and it was all about his legacy, his, his, his legacy. He wanted to be the last great CEO of Disney. And uh, he wanted to grow the company. He should have just stayed out because if he'd retired and stayed out, you know, it right. would have been easier well, for Abigail him. Abigail Disney made comments before on another uh, thing, which I think I have a link to. She talked about, you know, Iger and Chapek, and she said that basically Iger left sooner than I think he was going to leave, and Chapek was there, and Chapek got kind of stuck with whatever they left him. Yeah. She said that, like, in an interview in 2022, I believe it was, when, when, they, when, when Iger came back. So she kind of is aware of the situation. So Iger deliberately stiffed everyone, and now yeah. we're like, but Iger's the savior, everyone. So Abigail Disney is Roy Disney's granddaughter, and she is one of the ones involved in this letter campaign, which I don't actually have the letters on this. Uh, I'll pull it up or anything. I'm just, you know, going to talk about Abigail in particular. So she made a movie, The American Dream of Other Fairy Tales, where she ripped Iger and the Disney company all the time. And she had an interview with Time Magazine. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at that in a minute. But one of the things she said was, I can't imagine that a CEO in good faith would object to having a more complex measure of success than simply something as blunt and, and silly as a share price. The share price has lost more than 40% of its value in the last two years, and this is in 2022, mm -hmm. which is pretty cataclysmic for people who rely on pension funds and things like that to live their lives. I hate it, but it's not enough of a way to know if the company is doing well or not. Becoming a laughing stock uh, is so bad that South Park is dedicating an entire episode to how badly Disney has has screwed up. Um, that's a pretty good bellwether, you know. I'm I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. 
So this is a whole article basically about, you know, when Iger came back in and she said, um, you said he planned to leave when he did. And she goes, I think he always wanted to leave, but COVID was coming. Basically, she keeps getting mad because when COVID, the pandemic came, it was going to get hard. She thinks he bailed. Yeah. And then she said, she talks here though about, or there's one place where she talks about um, Bob Chapek and she said he made a lot of rookie mistakes. Uh, I don't think he ever moved out of the rookie mistake territory. At bottom line, it was very poor succession planning, and the onus of that lands squarely on Bob, Bob Iger. As well as the shoulders of the board of directors. Of the board of directors, right? Yes. The ones you're supposed to keep there because yes. they all want them to stay because yeah. they're the way forward, guys. They're the way forward. So what did they promise her? That's that's why I know what they, they gave, they going to give her a board seat or something? Like, what know. did they promise her? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll give more charity money out. I don't know. Um, another comment. Okay, that was in 2020. That might have been like before. What do you think? When was the Time article? The Time article was uh, November of 2020, 2022. Okay. Yeah. So then the Forbes, there's another one with Forbes, okay? And in this one, or Fortune, I mean. In this one, she said, I think Bob is basically a decent person, but I think money and power have hijacked his sensibilities. What? As with so many people at the very top of systems, they can't see outside the system they're in. They can't imagine a different way of doing it, and that's what we need. A different a different regime. Right. Well, but no, but don't, don't pick. We need something different, but not not different. Not Nelson Peltz with Ike Perlmutter because they're Republicans and they're going to come in exactly. here and, and, and they're going to make Disney profitable. Hey, guess guess who else was pretty conservative? Your great uncle Walt. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You he have hated that. commies and socialists. So, yes. yeah, here. Disney heir slams great uncle Walt. He bordered on rabbit fascism. Rabbit fascism. Rabbit. Yeah. She goes on to this podcast. She was on uh, Mark Maron's podcast. And she she spoke too freely because it was coming up again, I think, because, you know, of Disney getting in the politics. And, you know, I guess he asked her, like, what'd you think of Walt? Because Walt was, you know, testifying against uh, communists, you know, back in the 50s. What do you think about that? And she's like, well, this is what she said. Um, he was basically a, a fascist. He was a chaotic genius. He bordered on rabid fascism. That's what she said about Walt Disney, Right. Um, she spoke with, uh, Mark Maron about her new documentary, the one that, you know, shits all over Disney. Yeah, but you know, it's okay. She's all on their side now. And her family's battle with addiction. Uh, that oh, she, she fessed up that she was, she was, you know, and which look every, you know, that's not a, but I'm just saying like, it was a pretty candid, uh, pretty candid interview. And she called Walt a fascist. Uh, she told Maron that while her great uncle Walt was a chaotic genius, he and his brother played up their prejudices of the time. They weren't shy about delving into stereotypes if it served them. But neither's Disney. Yeah. Current year. Um, the heiress know that Disney positioned the wolf from the three little pigs and the big bad wolf as a Jewish peddler and named one of the wise cracking black crows from Dumbo, Jim Crow. And not long after that, that's when Disney put the content warnings up, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but again, they made these movies in the thirties and forties and fifties. And I, I think like, I'm not excusing. I'm just saying like that, that was the era. Everybody did that. If Walt was guilty, then everybody was guilty. Warner brothers did it worse. Warner well, Brothers did so bad they banned some of the cartoons. She said her, her uncle and her dad. Yeah. Her grandpa, I mean. Grandpa. Yeah. Well, Roy, gra her grandpa. She, she yeah. bashed them both as yes. being, being fascist and all this other shit. Now she's telling you that, that you know, Bob oh, Iger Bob the, Iger yeah. and the board are, are the ones, you know, you remember what it's like? Bob Iger and his management team and the board of directors are faithful to the magic. So, I thought they were fascist. I thought the magic was fascist. Yeah, the magic is. They well, understand the longevity of the Walt Disney Company and all that shit. friendship is fascism. Friendship is fascism. <sighs> then she's going, Bob Iger has grown the company in a modern world, and he continues to maintain balance of creativity and profit. And um, it's still a company based on the desire to entertain and explore. Explore what? How you can make a Toy Story 20? Because you aren't making anything new. And when you do, you fill it so full of gender. No one watches the shit. Like, explore what? How to make a live-action remake of a live-action remake? How to beat a dead horse and then beat it again? I know. Let's go explore the game. Oh, my personal favorite is we're going to start this new... And I think there was an article on Yahoo who was mentioning it, too. We've mentioned this before. Disney's looking for the next big thing and, they're, and exploring. that They're announcing the stupid thing with Epic Games, which is already on the decline with Fortnite. And it's basically even Yahoo Finance. Okay, it's calling out. It's deja vu because Chapex did the same thing with the metaverse. You know, Iger was doing shit with the metaverse too. 
Yeah, but now it's it's different flavored shit because it's, it's different. Iger. It's, it's yeah. now you know one had you know peas in it, one has corn. I don't want to tell you. <laughs> it's the same. It's it's the same thing. Even Yahoo Finance is calling it. They're saying that what's you know it's Metaverse Part Two. Yeah, and look, Bob dumped a bunch of his own money into Metaverse investments. I guess he got burnt. He dumped a bunch of money in the Funko Pop, and he got burnt. But they shut all this all this stuff down yeah. since then, and they said this is another long shot of the company that may be in desperation mode. Well, I'm thinking rolling out the grandkids is desperation. Mode. Oh no, that absolutely is desperation mode. Like, but Abigail Disney is the last person you want to drag out. But people are going to look at it and be like, well, if a Disney says he's good, he's good. But most people aren't going to realize that she spent the last several years attacking Bob Iger, Bob Chapek, the Disney board, and even her own family. Wait, you know? well, this part I don't agree with. They're talking about. You know, desperation with the with the with the revenue, the the dividends, which I agree. The ESPN, Warner Brothers, I agree. The rumors that Peltz may try to break up the company. That wasn't Peltz, guys. That was Blackwell's capital that wanted to split the company off into other things. That wasn't Peltz. Yeah. So this this is what I'm I'm talking about because she said that too in her comments. She said about them coming in and wanting to split the company up, and I think Blackwell's is in there just to kind of throw this kind of doubt into it because people are going to look at it and be like, Oh, Oh, those, those other activist investors, they want to break up Disney. That's stupid. Their plans that was are stupid. Blackwell's. I don't remember Pelts and Missoula. They never said to break that. It up. That was somebody else. So you guys are, I don't, I mean, but that's I why I think Blackwell's there. I think Blackwell might actually be Bob Iger, uh, just a theory. And some other people have mentioned it too, but it might be that Iger, you know, that they're there so they can point to Blackwell and be like, look how stupid their their ideas are. Look at these stupid, stupid ideas. They want to break up Disney and people who aren't paying attention are going to think that's what Nelson Peltz and Jay Rizzullo want to do. And it can be further from the truth. Uh, Jay Rizzullo especially has worked at Disney for or had worked at Disney for a very long time. He wants to see Disney become successful. I mean, look, <sighs> Do I think there's any perfect person to put in right, at this point in time? No. But do I think the way it's stay, the status quo should stay the same? Hell no. No. The status quo is not working. Also, Abigail Disney had a hissy fit about Bob Iger's pay and said it was insane because no one should have that much money right. and stuff like that. You know, she just goes on and on. She has spent years shitting on Iger. Mm. Usually followed with, well, I have to be careful what I say because I don't want them to, you know, come back and say, you know, you're, you're saying that the Disney board person isn't, yeah. you know. But – She's been all kinds of years shitting on her her uncle, her, her grandpa, her great uncle, her grandpa, mm -hmm. uh, Iger, the board, everything else to get herself attention. And now she's like, guys, the magic needs to stay with Iger and company. I thought you just pissed at him a few months ago because he didn't he didn't do what you wanted about the uh, writers and actors guild because she's part of the writers guild. Yeah. You know, and she was pissed about Iger's comments and calling him out then. But now he's the the good caretaker of the magic. I think she's worried what happens to her if Peltz comes in. I think she's worried. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't know. It, it, to me, this feels very political. Either Disney promised her something and she's doing a, you know, a one. Well, it's not just her. It's her and her, her other, you know, great, other grandkids. Right. And but stuff. She, she has spent the last five or six years shitting on Iger and Disney and even... Even her own family, which I was appalled. I can't believe she went on that podcast and was like, oh, yeah, he was basically a fascist. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, mm -hmm. what the fuck? Then what? just sell Where all you your off? shares and then remove yourself completely. But yeah, she change won't. your name, sell your shares, change your name, give all your money to charity. Right. She you know? won't. I'm like, come on. Like, you are the, the only reason anybody listens to you is because of your fascist grandfather. I do I'm not sorry. think dragging out Abigail Disney and the other grandkids to tell the shareholders to vote white is probably the best thing to do. I really think the screams of desperation, especially yeah. when Abigail Disney's involved and everybody knows that she has spent years yeah. making the Disney company brown because she kept shitting all over it and using a, it to try to promote her own movie. I know. A whole it. documentary about how awful Disney is. Now she's all of a sudden, now she's like... Oh yeah, let's keep everything the same. I'm like, this is the same company you you literally have have made a career out of shitting on because you're not doing anything else, but you're going around making the rounds, doing all the podcasts and the press junkets and the whatever. No, no, she is. She's out there, you know, getting arrested for protesting jet fuel last year. Champagne socialist.
I'm just saying. Like, yeah, cause when, when, you know, so, so I'm a philanthropist, okay? Well, you, you're for all your talk about how they have to do this, that, and everything else. She was mad. She goes, you know, Bob Iger could have, instead of taking his, his pay his payday, he could have got still got $10 million instead of $65 million and yeah. get doubled salary of all the Disneyland employees. Disneyland only, not anybody else. And he could have doubled all their pay and then and still made $10 million. Well, you can sell all your shit and give the money. I don't see you doing it. Oh, yeah. I don't know what her net worth is. It's high, though. I mean, she's got a lot of Disney stock. So I'm I don't like, know what they do, though. They said that the family doesn't have a whole lot. Hmm. Well, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I have no idea. I, I just, This is just so weird. I mean, th- this is desperation. They had to have promised her something. Uh, you know, because they, like, they, they pretty much, like, tried to distance themselves uh, themselves from her for a while because she's been highly critical of the company. Oh, they always say they have no comment when she makes no comment. comment. And now they're just like, oh yeah. Now she's like, oh yeah, I love Bob. I'm like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I love my fascist, my fascist great uncle and my my grandfather, a bunch of. When you have to go get Abigail Nazis. Disney, which is probably not help. It's probably like what you say, um, non help. Yeah, anti help. Anti help. She's anti help. Then you know you're done desperate because yeah. this is anti help. I, I don't know what else to say. Yeah. Are we going to wrap it up? We're going to wrap this up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. Bye.